Hi guys, this is take 1000 of how to reroute your doll basic technique. So let's just hope it works. I'm so tired right now that I'm just going to go into it and then I'll talk about what I'm doing as I go. Um, I already have some yarn going. Um, so I'll finish this off um, and then I'll show you how to finish it off, but I'll also show you how to start a new um, length of yarn. Okay, so I am right now just going to show you that uh, how to come out, sorry, how to start. Okay, so I need you to imagine that you have your yarn threaded into your needle. I've done a double strand just because I want a fuller head, but you can do a single strand too. Original dolls have a single strand. Okay, um, so I want you to pretend that you have um, your needle threaded that there's a knot at the very end and now you are going into the head from the hole here and you're gonna come out. Uh, you can really just start from any, hair, uh, any hole. So I am going to come out from the, a hole that has not been touched, that has not been worked at all and that is right there. So, go come out. Okay, so. I'm also recording this in the photo booth. Okay, so you see the head of my needle, it's coming out. I'm gonna push. If you have to push too hard, your holes are not large enough. Um, you shouldn't have to push too hard because if your holes aren't large enough, you're gonna break your needle or you're going to damage the vinyl. Um, because when you force your needle through, it's just gonna break the vinyl. So make sure that the holes are large enough to accommodate your needle. Okay. All right, now, so I've come out through that hole. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back, backwards, okay? I'm not going to, intuitively, you just wanna go in the same direction, like not in the same direction, in the direction um, that needs to still be worked, but that's not how you do it. You have to go backwards, okay? Essentially, you're going through every hole twice. So now I'm going backwards. This is gonna present a problem of friction. And so I'll tell you how to mitigate that. Okay, so lots of areas of friction. <clears throat> Don't do this because uh, you could accidentally stab yourself, but I've done this so many times that I, I have control. Okay, the loops that are already made, I have my index finger holding them down so that this yarn doesn't um, kind of, so that there's no friction between this yarn and this yarn. So I'm holding this down. I'm also going to mitigate potential friction between these two strands. I'll show you how I'm doing that. I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use my middle finger to hold these down. I'm going to use my index finger to mitigate the friction between um, these two ends. The way I'm going to do that is, so one finger holds down the loops, the other finger just kind of stays where the needle is. And the reason I do that is because I'm separating the two strands. I'm not really letting them meet and it also allows me to control the length of the loop. So I'll just kind of tug while I tug here. So a little tug of war. An eyeball. Yeah, I like it to be about that long. Okay, stop. Now I have this I'm going back in. Now intuitively again, well no, this is intuitive. When you're coming out of the head, it's pretty intuitive. You're gonna come out through the hole that hasn't been worked. It's when you're going back in the head that it's not very intuitive. So let's go do the exit. There we go. You might have noticed that um, my holes at the very end are smaller than the rest of the head and that's just because um, I wanna keep um, the hairline as aesthetically pleasing as possible. And if you have large holes, um, you can kind of tell. And so I decide that I'll struggle uh, the first bit, right? That's why they're smaller. And then later on I can um, be compensated for that, for my struggle. Okay, so I just came out of here, but I don't like what's happening to my yarn here. It is all twisty wisty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, let this tension sort itself out by just holding my head in the air and letting the needle kind of just 
while the yarn kind of just sort itself out. But I'm going to help it a little bit too, okay? Okay. So I have uh, now allowed that to straighten itself out. And I am going to now do the non-intuitive part or the counterintuitive part. And I'm going to go in uh, through a hole that's already been worked. So the hole that I, I went through um, to make my previous loop, which is right there. But in order to do that, guys, like I said, like um, there's there's a lot of potential friction and then tangling and just a mess. And this is where people get super frustrated and they're like, I don't want to do this. So in order to mitigate that, I am going to just pull, 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 pull this, these loops back. And I'm going to create, like, I'm going to create some room in that hole to accommodate um, the strand. Okay, so now I'm going to go through. Yes, I'm going to go through. Okay, it's come out. Okay. And then, I mean, you can use whatever fingers free to, to get a hold of that loop. So I, here I use my ring finger. All right. So again, I'm still holding this down. Okay. Holding these loops down and then just deciding how big I want that to be. Okay, good. Nice. Okay. Um, come out again. Ooh, problem like that look there's that's going to create problems as you go back in and out so I'm gonna I'm gonna diagnose what's going on here so I'm actually gonna take the loop I just made and pull it is it shortening as I pull it I'll have to kind of just look because you don't want like the inside to be nasty messy like that okay it's not looks like it's a previous hole Okay, um, I don't like that loop though, so I'm gonna cut it in between because that is gonna cause problems. All right, so I'm gonna take my scissors and you see how there's like that nasty little loop? That's gonna cause problems. Okay, so I went and I cut it. I'm just gonna trim it so that there's not much of a tail left. You need the inside to be as clean as possible as you work so yeah anyways okay just fix that all right so there we go um it's really nice that now i'm at the end because i this is also a bit of a challenge for people like how do i finish my um my strand okay um so i'm coming i don't like how tangled that is i'm just gonna untangle come out through the next available hole so this is the intuitive part Coming out and as I'm pulling it out I like not like going quickly like yanking it out because that can cause tangling so I like just kind of easing it in little by little little by little and this time I was wise enough to look inside as I yanked it to make sure that um, there's no like tangling happening inside and there isn't there's zero of that okay going back in the counterintuitive part so you have to go back in of the previous loop. Sorry, I'm not showing you this part because I'm just my hands are a bit tired, so I'm gonna use my leg here. So okay. Right. There we go. Right, this is where it gets a little tedious. Oh well we're getting to the tedious part. This is the finishing. Uh, okay, so again I'm just I'm just carrying on doing the exact same thing. I'm interested in showing you the how to end it so I'm just trying to get there really quickly okay so this is how much I have left um, enough that it's uncomfortable to go back in so this is where I'll just snip okay leaving that hanging then I'm just I'm not gonna thread my needle I'm gonna use my needle I'm, gonna, I'm going to come out through Next available hole. So right there. Okay. It's coming out, coming out. Okay. There's a head. All right. I'm gonna thread 
this yarn through. I'm just going to cut evenly. Right. Just threaded. Use the same technique of to minimize friction. Okay. Now you're going to kind of guesstimate your hole. I'm going to take the yarn, just leave your needle for now, okay? It's going to be about that long. Okay, this is how much yarn I need for the next loop. This is where I'm going to make my knot. Make sure you tighten that knot because it has to go through a hole, which can be a bit tricky. Um, so I'll show you how to make it less tricky. Okay, so this is ready now to go back in. So still not gonna thread my needle. Putting my needle in, okay, through the hole of my previously created loop. All right, there's the head. This is where I'm gonna thread needle okay all right where is the knot so I normally kind of just like really going doo -doo -doo -doo, kind of trying to force the hole to expand a bit because it's going to have to accommodate a hole a, a knot okay so Going. There we have it. It came through. Release my needle. Okay, so now I just pulled. I just kept pulling, okay? And uh, it looks like a stitch now, so now I'm going to pull my, create my loop. And uh, you don't have to worry that the thread's gonna come out, the yarn's gonna come out because there's a knot now on the other side. There we go. Again, we don't, so now there's quite a bit of yarn hanging out. This is excess yarn, um, but you don't, you, you want it clean on the inside so that as you're going in and out, um, there's no friction. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna try to cut as short as I can. It's hard to show you, so I'm just gonna do it and then show you what it looks like at the end. Cut off about this much, okay? I left about a centimeter after the knot. I'm just kind of trimming some other problematic hanging yarn. Shake it all out, okay. The lighting, I'm using photo booth, not very good. Okay, let's try again. So now you can see it looks a bit cleaner. Anyway, that is um, your basic rerouting technique. Um, happy Cappy Restoration. Um, I guess I should say a few things. Uh, I recommend this technique over the pre-made loops and all technique. The reason being is you need glue um, to keep the loops in if you use the um, pre-made loops and all technique. And it can get a little mess messy. I prefer using polyurethane as opposed to glue. And polyurethane expands, and so you might have to like sand little pockets of where some glue might be coming out, which is not fun. Um, so you have you have that extra step of adding glue, no matter what glue you use. And you have the additional step of potentially having to clean up the mess that the glue, the glue leaves. Um, so this technique, you're actually sewing the loops into the vinyl as opposed to just kind of um, putting the, the loops in, which is the pre-made loop technique. If you haven't seen my video, you can go watch. It's like a minute where I show you how to do the pre-made loop technique. I like this better um, for that reason, that you don't you can skip the loop part. Um, okay, the disadvantage of this technique is the degradation of the yarn. I'm going in and out, in and out, in and out, and every time um, I'm putting my yarn through um, potential degradation. These um, holes, as you can see, they're kind of jagged 
and they they really do um, cause trauma to the yarn. And no matter how strong your yarn is, it it fuzzes it up a little bit. Now I am using 100% wool. This is not yarn that I normally recommend, but this is um, about 40 year old wool. And back in the day, I don't know, the yarn was just better, uh, I guess, or I just lucked out. Um, so anyway, because I don't recommend using uh, wool, as I said in my other video, um, how to choose yarn because it felts, but this is pretty good. Anyway, um, yarn is especially um, susceptible to degradation as it goes in and out, in and out. It's just, uh, it doesn't have, like if it's full wool, it doesn't have any nylon to add strength. Anyway, so um, that's the reason, that's the one disadvantage is that as you go in and out, in and out, you're causing inevitable damage to the yarn. The way to mitigate that is um, don't keep your yarn longer than about one meter. Reason being is, well, that's one of the reasons is that then um, it's not undergoing so much trauma by going in and out, in and out of the jagged holes. But the other reason being is that if you have a really, really long, strand of yarn, there's just more potential for friction and ugly loops and confusion to happen. Um, and then you never to want to reroute again. And I remember one of my boarding school teachers who, I mean, they were all insane, but I guess she wasn't as insane. I remember she told me, cause she used to teach us embroidery. She's like the wise person always keeps their, um, their thread short. And uh, I never forgot that. She, she taught me that when I was about 12 or 13 because I always had my thread like super, super long um, in embroidery class and, and yeah. Anyways, I guess it has something to do with the foresight, right? Um, thinking of potential complications in ahead uh, in advance. So um, keep your, don't keep, make your yarn so long. Um, it just avoids complications and it also um, protects the yarn. So I hope uh, that helped um, with, um, the technique. If you have any questions about like the drilling of the holes and whatnot, I just find it super tedious and boring to show me drilling the holes. You can just leave questions in the comments below. Mm, it really is really straightforward. You find a drill bit that is the same thickness as your needle and uh, away you go with the holes. This needle is an upholstery needle. I bought it off of Amazon. Um, you won't find them at Fabricland or Michaels or whatever. It's a specialized needle. Um, amazing though. It's about $30 with shipping. Um, yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend. This will cut your rerouting time in half. So thank you very much for watching this uh, boring video. Um, but if you're rerouting, it's probably very um, informative, I hope anyway. And uh, have a lovely day and happy holidays.